Not too long ago, I got an opportunity to use Cartesian speakers for the very first time, and I decided to make a Bose-style system. In fact, we called it the Better Than Bose system, and you guys asked me how did they actually measure her? How were the Cartesian speakers? And today, we're going to be going over that, so let's go and take a look at it right now. All right, so these are the Cartesian speakers that uh, Cartesian sent over. Clement actually sent them over, and I was really excited about getting a chance to use these. Now, after we talked for a little bit, I decided that it would be a good idea to try to make like a small scale Bose system. And the reason why I did that is because they sent five of these two inch drivers over, and he actually sent two of the four inch drivers. And the main reason is because they're eight ohm, and we could wire them down in to get down to four ohm, which allows me to get a little bit more of a subwoofer amplifier. After all, those four inch drivers are considered subwoofers. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about these. Now, I, I love the fact that you can really DIY, do whatever you want. And so for me, this Bose concept was just a cool idea. But there's a couple things you need to pay attention with the two inch driver. One, this has dual Neo motors. And because of that, it takes up a lot of space in the box, a lot more than a typical two inch driver. Uh, also, the faceplate is a little weird. Uh, and for DIY work, I'm just not a big fan of it. I'd rather it just be like either square or circle. Um, that makes it much easier for someone just to pick up and, you know, make a front baffle with. This is a little bit harder. I had to use the CNC to make the front baffle. Also, with the, the amount of space on there with the dual uh, Neo Magnet, although that should give it better performance, it makes it a little bit rougher to put in a smaller box. This speaker really excels in a small box. You just need to make the box bigger because, you know, the speaker itself takes up so much room inside the box. And I gotta say, I made a mistake when I built this box without really taking that into account. And that's because most two inch drivers, you just don't have to do that with. Uh, this one you do. And because of that, uh, I, I didn't get as low of a frequency response as I should have. But typically, uh, this should be pretty flat down to about 200 hertz, which is what you would expect of a small cube style speaker. Now, this is a full range speaker, and it does go all the way up to 20 kilohertz, which is significantly better than something like a Bose, which typically only went up to about 10 kilohertz. So for that, it's really exciting. But when we look at the response, you're going to see that big hump on the rear end. That's because I put it in too small of a box. So all right, you could have made a bigger box, and that rear end would have be would be fine. Uh, now the top end is going to be rising. Now the reason why it's rising is quite simply because of the fact that we don't have a baffle step compensation circuit on it, um, and that's going to be normal with any driver you put in it. If we put one on there, that would all come down, and everything would be within that plus or minus three decibels. Also, if we compensated for the baffle step. We're also going to need to put some passive components inside like the cube style speaker and that's going to once again make it a little bit bigger and kind of take away from that small size or compact size that it could be. So with that in mind I feel like either the passive crossover should be better placed outside the box um, somewhere like close to your components or really the best thing would probably be DSP. We can DSP some of this middle range down a little bit and get it a much flatter response. And that's really what Bose did anyway. So I think really these two inch, if you're going to be using them the way they are, uh, they're going to be probably best to be used with DSP. Um, another idea would be to use these as like the tweeter on a full range. Some people like those wide bands as, as tweeters. And I think that would also be a really good choice for these. And we can see that in the distortion measurements because after two kilohertz, uh, this really does have really good distortion before that, it, you know, especially the third order just isn't the greatest with distortion. So I'm not sure. Honestly, I, I felt like this really underperformed for the price that it was. Uh, I do like it, but I don't know that I would personally pay that price for that two inch based off the performance that I'm seeing with it. Some of that might also be just the box that we put it in as well. All right, now the four inch driver is a completely different story. Now the four inch driver, they call a subwoofer. I'm not gonna call it a subwoofer because I don't think it's best place is for subwoofer. And let's go ahead and show you why. This is th This can work as a compact subwoofer. You're gonna get about 50 hertz f3 you put it in a box you could maybe get a little bit more if you dsp it not, you're not going to get a lot of low end extension out of this subwoofer um, but the thing is it can use a really small box really really small 
However, there's an issue with that. Whenever you can get uh, this much excursion on this four inch driver, which has that carbon fiber cone, has that awesome excursion. I mean, it's a beautiful driver. But whenever you can get that much excursion, the problem is, and it can use a small box, the problem is you're gonna have a long port. And that's exactly what you have here. So much so that the port negates the small box. I mean, if you create too long of a port, that's gonna be internal inside the box. And of course that's gonna get bigger and bigger until the box gets big. The other problem is the longer the port, you're also gonna have issues with first port resonance. And so that's gonna be problematic as well as we start creating a bigger box. And really, honestly, I think this four inch, if you're gonna use it as a subwoofer, is, is going to be best used with a passive radiator or two. Uh, I really seriously considered buying some passive radiators to work on this build because I think that's really the best thing for them. But I just, I just didn't because I wanted to see how it would do with just a normal sized port and it chuffed. Now, having said that, I don't think the best thing is for it to be a subwoofer even with passive radiators. For me, this thing has a tremendous response. When we take a look at it, it goes to two to three kilohertz really well. Um, the distortion profile looks amazing on this. And for me, the best thing is a two-way. If you add it in a two-way, you can now port it. You're not gonna be giving it as much watch, especially near field, which I think a four inch driver is most likely going to be a near field speaker. I don't think you're gonna fill up a room with a four inch driver. So a near field response, you're gonna be using a lot less wattage for those, you're gonna be using that wattage in a much wider frequency response range. And for me, that's where this goes. You can go ahead and port it, and you should have a really nice two-way speaker. I did play around with these uh, a little bit with uh, just like full range, what would they sound like? And they're really good. I mean, they, they sounded really good. Now, you will see that little bit of rising, uh, in the two to three kilohertz range, don't worry, you can take care of that with an inductor. As soon as you create your crossover, that's gonna be taken care of. That's just part of the baffle step. So for me, that four inch driver, uh, I mean, as far as I can think of, I don't know of a better four inch driver that can really go that low and also extend that high and with that low of distortion. So for me, with those Cartesian speakers, that's where I was really excited about. Overall, I did like the Cartesian drivers. I thought they were very good build quality. Uh, and I think that those better than Bose speakers could be phenomenal. Overall, I had a really great time with the Cartesian drivers. I really love that four inch driver. If you get a chance to put your hands on them, go ahead and get one. Hopefully they'll come to America soon, but for the time being, you do have to go through the French website. If that should ever change, I'll make sure to let you guys know. All right, guys, this is Toys DIY Audio, and I'm out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. See you guys.